So how long does it really take to make mead at home? Today, I wanna to unpack this question and help you understand the mead making process and what you should expect when starting your mead. So let's get started. So if you are watching this video, you probably saw another video or a book or something talking about mead making, you found it to be interesting, or you're just looking for clarity on how long your mead should be taking. Today I'm talking about the mead making process, the actual process of making it, not necessarily letting it set aside for a long time and age. We're just talking about the fermentation process and the length of time or the timeline that that will be roughly for you. The other side, the aging portion, I have a whole video on that that I'll plug down in the description of this if you want to know more about that. That is a variable here that we might touch on a little bit, but I go way in depth in that video. So there are three main factors that affect how long it will take for your mead to finish fermentation. Fermentation at its basic point is taking the sugars presented taking your yeast that is there and letting those yeast eat the sugars, consume all the sugars they can from that and fermentation. They uh, convert that to alcohol. And then of course the byproduct of that is CO2, which is something that's released from the mead as it goes along. The three main factors that affect how long it takes to ferment are your available sugars, how much sugar was put into the brew, the yeast itself, what kind of yeast it is, is it something that's gonna move fast? Is it a, a wine yeast, is it a champagne yeast? Generally just the kind of yeast you used. And the third one is that yeast's health. Healthy yeast will generally ferment faster and we'll unpack that here in a second. A rough timeline, just, just an outline timeline of how long a fermentation generally takes. And I'm talking just all these factors working out perfectly is like, Primary fermentation, from the moment that you put your yeast into a brew, should be between two and let's say six weeks for that fermentation to completely finish. Now that's a big range, and I leave it open to that because of the variables we're gonna talk about here. But primary fermentation, the bulk of the fermentation should be two to six weeks long, depending on what you're doing. Now there are moments where it might go longer than six weeks. Very rarely have I had that though. And there are moments where it will be shorter than two weeks. It's also very rarely have I had that circumstance and uh, done something with it. So let's unpack the first thing. So let's unpack variable number one, which is how much sugar is available for your yeast and why this matters. When you're making a mead, you have lots of options. You have, of course, billions of fruits you can choose from, lots of other spices, hops, recipes, uh, ingredients you can throw into that mead. You also have different amounts of sugar you can throw in. So if you want something that is less alcoholic or lower ABV, you're gonna throw less sugar in your starting fermentation. We're gonna say sugar as honey in this circumstance, but it could be subbed out for any sugars that are fermentable. If you want something that's more alcoholic or higher ABV, you're gonna put more sugar in. There's just this little sliding scale that happens there. Generally speaking, the more sugar available for the yeast, the longer the fermentation will take because they have to consume all of that sugar there. You can think of it like food for yourself. If you, you were given two weeks worth of food, uh, you could try to chow down and kill it in a three or four days, but it's gonna be maybe a little more tough when in reality you're supposed to space it out. So yeast are similar, they can, in certain circumstances, consume all of the sugar that might be for two weeks in five days. But again, it's very circumstantial to your yeast. So when you're planning your brew and you're going, okay, I'm gonna make something that's only 5% alcohol by volume, ABV, you're only putting a little sugar in, you can probably guarantee that that's gonna be done in a week to two weeks, um, done with your fermentation portion at least. Now, if you put something that has 15% ABV worth of sugar, and your yeast are able to consume all of that sugar, it's gonna be two, four weeks, maybe five weeks before it's done fermenting. So one important factor here is when your yeast are done fermenting, it is encouraged to actually let them set on the yeast for just a, another week or two. And this is partially so the, the yeast can help clean up 
Maybe some of the flavors that they threw into that brew in their fermentation, they can also uh, just flocculate to the bottom. If your brew finishes, let's say in two weeks, but it looks really cloudy, give it another week. That will give it time for the yeast to clean up any flavors that went funky, which happens, or for them to just flocculate to the bottom, make your racking or moving over easier. So variable number one is pretty simple. Less sugar means quicker fermentation, generally. More sugar, longer fermentation. That same thing can be true if you add more sugar to continue the fermentation, obviously continuing the fermentation will uh, kick the ball down further for that fermentation to be done. So if you keep adding sugar, it could be eight, 10 weeks before that fermentation is truly done. Let's dive into variable two, which is your yeast. Your yeast are a very important part of the brew. You might see some um, companies such as Bruzy, a company that is huge on Instagram and I'm sure other places that talks about their yeast, consuming all the sugars and stuff in five days and then being done. Unfortunately, this is not necessarily true. And I've done a whole video on specifically with Bruzy about why their product is not great and the issues at hand. And again, I'll put that down in the description. So if you're coming to this from a Bruzy video, um, join us, come make better alcohol than what's being presented there. So your yeast have an alcohol by volume cap, which means the most sugar they can actually consume. This is kind of a, a scale that gets messed up. So they might say 14% on your yeast, but they might push past that. They might actually go to 15%. They might go below that. What's important to know here is that you need to know your yeast alcohol by volume cap, which means like the general amount of sugar they're gonna be able to consume. The different kind of yeast you're using also plays a difference. I'm not gonna say that like a beer yeast ferments slower than a wine yeast, but I will say that a champagne yeast uh, generally is a pretty quick fermenter, vigorous fermenter. Uh, the Kvaik series of uh, yeast are notoriously fast fermenters when put in higher temps. So things like that will uh, affect how quickly the fermentation goes. Your yeast might be graded to move fast. Kvaik Voss is notably one that pushes out brews in three to four days. Fermentation finishes in three or four days. That can happen that way. There's still the post uh, let your yeast all flocculate out and those things that we're gonna talk about too. But your yeast cap matters. The uh, general vigorous fermentation that your yeast might be presenting to the brew also makes a difference. Essentially just look up what's happening with your yeast and you might find some information to know if it's a quick fermenter. If it's quick to flocculate to the bottom, meaning all fall to the bottom. If it is, uh, I mean, there's a plethora of information. Just look up your yeast, you'll find the information you need. So the last factor that affects fermentation is the yeast health. Yeast health is so important. Essentially your yeast health is exactly what it is. It says it is. How healthy are your yeast? Are they fermenting in a way that is going to present quality alcohol that is not going to be stressed? Your yeast are little organisms. They can be stressed out and when they get stressed out, they can generally put off some off flavors and some bad things. Things that help your yeast be healthy are giving them proper nutrients when fermenting. There are some really quality yeast nutrient calculators out there that I'll link below that help you figure out how much nutrient to add to your brew. It's really important that you give the right amount of yeast nutrients so that they can ferment in a healthy manner. Too little will not give them enough to go along. Too much doesn't necessarily always matter, but it can lead to some weird flavors if you add way too much. So the right amount of yeast nutrient will help your yeast ferment in a healthy manner, giving them the proper amount of fermentation time. If your yeast are not healthy, something that should have been done in two weeks might take three, might take four, might take eight. It all just depends on, again, the starting point, how much sugar is there, and if they can handle that amount of sugar and ferment through it. I can't stress this enough. You might have had a bad brew, not because of um, you mixing up things wrong, not because of an infection, but because of the yeast health. If you haven't given your yeast nutrient, the right temperature range that they need, 
those kind of two factors right there can really affect how quickly your brew will ferment along. It's important to note, this isn't a race. Your fermentation should not be a race to get to the end as fast as possible if you wanna make a quality product. Now, there are some yeasts that can do it really quick and go along, make a quality product in a few days. I've had a couple instances where I finished fermentation in three or four days with a quality brew, but it took knowing yeast health. It took giving the right nutrients. It gave, <laughs> meant giving the right temperature range and the right amount of sugar and those things for the fermentation to end. So when I say fermentation ending, I'm calling this primary fermentation. That's again, the bulk of the fermentation that occurs. As you're going along, let's say we start at 1.080 starting gravity. I've taken my hydrometer, floated it in my brew, and um, two weeks, let's say three weeks goes along, and it is at 1.000. The primary fermentation is, is done, arguably, because all the sugars that could have been consumed have been consumed. Now, this isn't always the instance. If your number was not 1.000 or your yeast have capped out at a number before that, there's a chance that the fermentation is also ended. For instance, I made a uh, huge mixed berry mead that was 1.140 starting gravity. It finished at 1.035 in that realm. And when I say finished, I mean it stopped fermenting and sat there for a long time. And I knew it was done after checking the gravity over the course of two weeks, multiple times. It had literally stopped. This is a very regular thing. The final number just needs to be consistent. Back with our original one, that 1.080, finishing at 1.000, assuming your yeast still have the ability to consume more sugar, there are some steps you need to take if you want to add more sugar as sweetness instead of fermentation. So that's a whole different topic of how to stabilize, how to pasteurize and back sweeten a mead, which I have another video on how to talk about that or what to do in that situation with how to make a sweet mead. Primary fermentation is just that bulk of the fermentation. If you added more sugar with the intention of adding more alcohol, that will take you into what I'm gonna call and some people call a secondary fermentation. This is a whole hot topic because some people don't call it secondary, some people call it something else. In the wine world, it's a whole different thing. So that's further fermentation. The whole point of this video is talking about when it's done fermenting and what to do next. We've covered it two to eight weeks, let's say, for your fermentation. The next steps, which maybe I'll make this a whole other video, is what to do post-fermentation. There are tons of different steps here, tons of options. It's a open sandbox of what you wanna do with your brew. But if you wanna know how long your brew should take, at the end of the uh, fermentation process, it is about two to eight weeks. Then you have to add on some extra steps. Your mead will probably take from the moment you start it to the moment you drink it, I'm gonna say at bare minimum, probably three months. If you're doing anything that is, let's say 8% ABV or higher. If you're doing stuff that's lower than that, you can probably get away with drinking it in a month and a half two months in that room. But there's your answer. So I hope I've hit all those three topics well. Make sure you know how much sugar you're putting in, affects the amount of uh, time for your primary fermentation. Your yeast, check out your yeast information. I have a video on that as well. Just Google it, it's really easy. And the last one is yeast health. Give them the proper nutrition, the proper temperature range, and they'll ferment happily and healthily. And you will have yourself a mead done in pretty short amount of time in the grand scheme of things. In the moment, you're waiting for a long time. But when you look back on it, it's really, it flies by. Let me know what you think. What other topics do you want me to discuss? I really enjoy getting to do these videos. I know they're not the same as recipes or anything like that, but they're still fun and I hope they're helpful. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya in the future.